I don't remember my first NMR experiment, what it was, but I remember how I started to do NMR. And I started doing a solid state NMR. And uh, I remember it was a very old XL100 that we had received in Buenos Aires, donated from the University of Utah. And uh, I worked with a very nice chap by the name of uh, Luis Diaz, who knew how to make spinners. And uh, I remember spending the full, my first full year machining rotors, Andrew rotors. And, and, and I remember the happiness when the rotor would spin at one kilohertz. That's, that's, that's what I remember. It was one, 1.2 kilohertz. And, and then eventually it would uh, explode before it could ever give an NMR signal. So, so that's how I remember I started my, my Delrin uh, machining career. So I think the luckiest one was uh, when we decided that we're going to stop doing NMR and start doing imaging. And uh, I think it was lucky, it was about 10 years ago maybe a little bit less. I think it was lucky because uh, it helped me discover a field I didn't really know. And uh, it's really a field full of fun and physics and opportunities and meaning. And uh, I think that was, that was a lucky choice. I think we, I've, I've gone into things that didn't lead to anything over the years, and I'm sure I'm, I'm still going to do that in the future again. But when I think about my least successful experiment, I, I'm thinking about something I did in the sixth grade before I knew anymore, where I somehow got in charge of a very primitive science lab, and I managed to plunge the whole school into darkness by making a big short circuit. And uh, I did that in a room that was full of smoke, and when the teachers came to see what happened, <laughs> I said nothing, <laughs> which the smoke eventually you know, belied. But uh, I guess they were so happy that no one was hurt that they, they let me out of the hole. I think I, I enjoyed m many research projects. I, 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 what I enjoyed probably most was to learn from projects where I didn't know what I was getting into and uh, and I ended up learning or by myself or from the students or the postdocs mostly with things that have to do with the applica with applications on the spectroscopy or on the imaging itself uh, I, I think whether it's solids or liquids or, or bio or as long as you learn something and you discover something that you were not expecting, it's uh, enjoyable. I, I'm sure that there is no single key of success in a scientific career. I don't think that, that there is a recipe that, that you can say if you follow this, this and that, uh, you're going to be successful. One thing I take, I, I, I I tell my students, I tell, tell my children, is say, uh, it's very unlikely that you'll be successful doing something you don't enjoy doing. So I think the first component of a successful scientific career is uh, to enjoy it. If you feel that the, the shoe is tight, that's probably not, not your best choice. I'm sure there are other things in life you can do better and, and, and you should you should think about it. And also, science is very wide and there are people that are good for some kind of science and people that are good for other kind of science, people that are good doing hands-on experiments and people that are good doing derivations. And my advice is go into what you, you enjoy doing. It. And if you don't enjoy doing it, look for something else. And look before you're way too far walking along uh, along that uh, line, because otherwise you'll think it's a pity to come back and then you can be unhappy for many decades. I, unfortunately, if you think you enjoy it, there is no 
substitute for hard work and respiration. You have to invest the time and the effort and oftentimes just think monothematically on a problem and think about the problem and think about why things are not working and don't let go. Don't let go because if you're enjoying it and you think it should work and you're stuck, only by thinking and working and reading you'll be able to solve it, not by just tweaking around. Then it will just break, it will not get solved. So I, get, I try to get advice from many people. I get the, uh, I definitely get advice uh, from family and friends on important things. I definitely get advice from colleagues, colleagues at work, colleagues overseas. I also get lots of good advice from uh, from my students over the years. You have to, they don't give advice as such, but they say things that if you think about it, uh, you can learn a lot about what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. So advice is not just coming and telling somebody you should do this, you should not do that, which uh, of course I, I pick up the phone sometimes and I ask people on advice, should I do this, should I not do that. But also comments that uh, the people of the people that you spend the day with are also, it's also pretty valuable. Yeah, so I, I spend most of the day doing NMR and MRI, so <laughs> one of the things I enjoy is actually coming back home <laughs> after a long day <laughs> and just uh, I, I, I like coming back home and leave everything outside the home. That is definitely something that helps me a lot, and whether that means just you know, having dinner or going for a hike or going for a ride or whatever, that, that uh, just relaxing, finding ways to relax is, uh, does me very well. I don't know, I've done solids in MR and liquids in MR, and proteins and materials and animals and humans. <laughs> I'm not sure where I should shift next. Uh, I'm very attracted by these uh, optically detected magnetic resonance methods. Uh, I think they will have a bright future in NMR, in magnetic resonance in general. Uh, I'm very attracted by the combination of uh, EPR and NMR. <clears throat> but I'm not sure if I have the bandwidth to, to move on to something else. Time will tell. I'm very optimistic. I'm very optimistic. I know NMR is uh, not going through an easy period, but as someone that has seen uh, fashions coming in and out, uh, and fads and, and flavors of the month coming in and out, I know that NMR can do things that no other technique can, can do. Uh, in the same way as it can see into living tissues, in, better than any other thing that is known today. In the same way, it can see inside living cells, it can see how things move and behave and transform uh, better than anything else that I know of. So I think that as long as, as uh, we keep that in mind, we meaning the people that know NMR and what NMR can do, keep that in mind, I think uh, NMR is here, at least for the foreseeable future.